Hi, I'm Pastor Tay of the Titus 2 Ministry and PastorTay.com. Welcome to Expresso. It's an interactive Bible study that is like Expresso, strong and smooth. Enjoy the taste. Hey everyone, I'm Pastor Tay of the Titus 2 Ministry and PastorTay.com. I am a marriage counselor and welcome to Talk Live Tuesday. This is a live conversation inside the Titus 2 community. And hey, it is good to be back. I've been away for four weeks teaching elsewhere, but it is nice to be back home and uh, with you guys. Now, if you are watching through YouTube, through our Espresso channel, we welcome you as well. We hope that you enjoy and are blessed. And then, hey, join us inside the Titus 2 community. Now, if you're watching on a replay, uh, that's good too. Please uh, drop your comments and the questions and I will get back to you even if it's a replay. Now, if it is a replay, remember that, uh, well, if you are on a laptop or desktop, there is a menu tab to your left. And that, uh, well, there's a tab called Units. And go there for the previous shows. In fact, we're building a curriculum. So you want to be able to go back and access the previous ones there. If you are on a mobile device, the... Uh, Menu tab called Units is on the very top, and so access it there, would you? And so this is great. We're building a curriculum, and uh, if uh, you are a newcomer, you know that the old stuff is still there. If you are an old-timer, uh, you have an opportunity go, to go back and uh, access all of that as well. So tonight, we are going to have a conversation about marriage talking about the scriptures and how to apply them specifically into our marriage. And what we have done is we've created a four-topic rotation. Um, they are communication, conflict, in-laws, and sex. You should know that by now because we already went through two rotations. We're on our third rotation right now. Community, <laughs> did I just say community? Communication, conflict in-laws and sex and um, we are now at the top of the rotation again talking about communication and uh, as with all the topics hey this is a big one and so with all big topics we got to choose a particular focus and our focus for tonight is talking too much <laughs> that's our topic for tonight do you talk too much hey if you are visiting uh, I wonder, I'm not really seeing everything in the scroll, but uh, drop a smiley face, give me a thumbs up, happy face. Are there happy faces? <laughs> Go ahead and uh, let me know. Do you talk too much? Go ahead and uh, give me a yes or a no. Some people say, no, I don't talk too much. Others say, oh yeah, I talk too much. That's the hot topic for the table. But listen, the question at hand is this, okay? How do you know that you talk too much, okay? By what measurement did you determine that you talk too much? Now, I know there's this image of somebody who is, you know, you know, kind of chatty, little miss chatterbox, and that person, are, are you that type of person? If you are, let me know, drop it inside the scroll, and tell me if you are a little chatterbox. Now, Miss little miss chatterbox might think, uh, hey, I don't, I, I talk too much. Or what about the opposite? Did anybody uh, write in the scroll, I don't talk too much at all? Now that person might automatically think, hey, I'm not guilty at all. I'm, uh, I don't talk much at all. And I'm going to say uh, not to think that way, okay? That's not what we're talking about. I'm going to try to clarify something and see if you understand. Tell me if you understand, okay? And if you don't understand, okay, I gotta, I'm on a communication right now with George Zhao, our our uh, Titus 2 community director, and he's going to tell me if I need to clarify something, okay? So that's what this other phone is here for, because, by the way, Stuart is taking a break tonight, and so that's why he is not here. But uh, listen, I want to clarify something, that if you talk a lot, okay, so volume, if you talk a lot, quantity, that's not automatically bad. That can be a good thing. I kind of like people who talk a lot, okay? So I'm going to make a differentiation between two things, okay? Two things. Talking a lot, which I say is fine. Talking too much is bad. Did that make sense? Talking a lot 
is okay. I like people who are chatty. But talking too much is crossing the line, and that's not good. All right, so that's the clarification I want to make. And so it's more about what happens when you talk, okay? It's not really about talking a lot or talking little, because even a person who doesn't talk that much, when he does talk or she talks, might cause all kinds of bad things to happen. And I'm going to say that person, even though, what, he's an introvert and doesn't talk that much, could actually cause a lot of problems as well, okay? And so I hope you understood that distinction. This is not about the amount of talking that you do. Why don't you write that down? Somebody drop that in the scroll, please. Stuart's on vacation tonight, and so uh, I want to, um, uh, you guys just drop it in and have a good time inside the scroll, would you? And I'm just going to keep on talking here. So would you write this down? It's not about how much you talk. Not about how much you talk. It's not about the volume of words, okay? Somebody put that in the scroll. It's not about that. It's about what happens when you speak, okay? So if uh, the chatty person speaks and speaks and can't be quiet and, you know, yada, yada, just keeps on talking, I'm okay with that as long as good things happen, right? But um, uh, what about the opposite? If a quiet person who does not speak and then all of a sudden speaks and bad things happen, I'm going to say that's not a good thing, okay? I'm going to say that that person talked too much. How crazy is that? All right, so that's the hot topic on the table. It's about talking too much, and you could talk too much even if you are a quiet person. So here's what we're going to do. I asked you the question, how do you know if you talk too much or not? I am going to give you five test questions tonight. Check it. Five questions tonight, and you can measure yourself up to those five questions. I'm going to call it test questions, okay, to test if you are uh, too, uh, talking too much or not. And uh, the answer is going to be either yes or no. And uh, if you answer yes, that's not good, all right? So this is, kind, this is going to be like golf where you want to get a low score, okay? You want to get a lot of no's, okay? So here's five questions. Let's find out how you do on this test. You guys ready? And with each question, by the way, I'm going to give you a biblical principle as well. So here we go. Test question number one. We're trying to figure out if you're talking too much or not. Number one is, are you slow to listen and quick to speak? Somebody drop it inside the scroll, please. Hey, I see Don Elsley. I can see even from here. Don, thank you for dropping that inside the scroll. That's test question number one. Are you slow to listen and quick to speak? Because the biblical principle here is that you got to be slow to speak and quick to listen. Does that sound like a biblical principle to you? It should, or I should say a Bible verse. It should. It's a very well-known verse. It comes out of James chapter 1, verse 19, where it says everyone should be quick to listen and slow to speak. Listen, I just want to dispel this notion that if you've got a bunch of stuff that you have to say, that you just got to say it, or if it's something so important that you have to say it. There's nothing like that in the Bible. In fact, the Bible is much uh, different from that. You got to humble yourself, okay? You got to humble yourself and uh, be very slow and uh, exercise that wisdom. You know, I'm kind of contrasting a very popular notion today, in fact, in pop psychology that says you got to get it all out. You got to say it. Uh, what's the expression? Get it off your chest, okay? And I'm saying that's not cool, man. Don't do that. Get it off your chest. But you know what? In secular counseling, a lot of times they have, um, you know, those sessions where um, if your spouse is not there, okay, they'll say, hey, pretend the pillow is your spouse. And uh, go ahead. Let it all out. Get it all off your chest. What do you want to say to your husband? In fact, you're so angry. And next thing you know, in the counseling session, okay, I'm not making this up, you're like punching because you're just letting it all out. All your anger and frustration and everything that uh, you want to say. And so the uh, proposal is, after you do all that, oh, you feel so good. You let it all out. I'm saying, in fact, can I ask you a question? Does healing really happen when you let it all out? The answer is no. If you let it all out, you actually get even more angry. And that's a biblical principle we're going to talk about later. But right now, I'm just proposing to you something very simple, and that is don't let it all out, okay? Don't be quick to speak. In fact, be quick to listen. So pop quiz, 
What was test question number one? Are you slow to listen and quick to speak? Yes or no? Okay. How did you answer that? Remember, you want to get a bunch of no's. Okay. If you get yeses, it might be that uh, you might be an over talker. That's one of the uh, other terms that I'm going to use tonight. Here's test question number two, and that is, do you speak without thinking? Do you speak without thinking? Somebody drop that inside the scroll, please. That's the second test question, yes or no. Remember, you want to get a no, but be honest. Did you get a yes? Is that what you said to yourself? In other words, if you say a lot of stuff without thinking, the chances are really high. Stats I'm talking about. The propensity is really high that you're going to say something wrong. Okay? The evil meter is going to go really high up there. And so that's the biblical principle that if you just say a bunch of stuff, there's potential for things to go really wrong. Let me drop a verse for you and somebody please put it inside the scroll. Proverbs chapter 15 verse 28 says, The heart of the righteous weighs its answer. But the mouth of the wicked gushes evil. Or I should look up, gushes evil. Because in the original Hebrew, it is the imagery of a geyser that is just exploding. And you know what a geyser is, right? Um, you know those, those hot um, ground? I don't even know how to describe There's a hole in the ground and it gets really hot and it just explodes with uh, hot water that is shooting up in the air. Uh, Old Faithful, what state is that in? Somebody tell me. I think it's in Wisconsin, but it's the idea of Wyoming, is it? Wisconsin? I'm not sure. Somebody Google that and drop it inside. But Old Faithful is that famous geyser that after, uh, what, the pressure builds up and so forth, it just explodes. And so it's that idea in the original Hebrew that the mouth of the wicked gushes evil like a geyser. And so can I ask you, drop it in the scroll, please. Are you <laughs> a geyser mouth? Is your mouth like a geyser? Old Faithful? I'm thinking Old Faithful came from the idea that it faithfully explodes. Now in this sense, I'm thinking an introvert or somebody who is, uh, somebody who doesn't talk a lot, could be Old Faithful too. Why? Because he's holding it in for a really long time and then all of a sudden it just gushes out. And so again, I'm not out here to get the extrovert and just condemn the extrovert. That's not what this is about. Whether you are an introvert or whether you are an extrovert, you could be guilty of over-talking, talking too much. And test number two is you're talking without thinking. Okay? And so uh, let's go back to that key verse again in Proverbs 15, verse 28, where the first part says, or uh, it says, the heart of the righteous weighs its answer. And so uh, what's, can I ask you, what does weighing your answer mean? Does that sound like you're slowing down a little bit? You're weighing it to see what the value of that answer is? That's kind of the biblical principle here. In other words, you think twice, you think three times, four times, you slow down and you weigh. And that comes from the original uh, Hebrew uh, back in that situation where, you know, they did business transactions on carts, you know, whether they're selling vegetables or whatever. And what they did was they had uh, scales and they would put weights on one side and what, a cabbage on the other, and they would weigh things out. And that was a very careful process. In other words, it was a business transaction where uh, things were carefully weighed. And so God's word uses that analogy to say, you got to be the same way business-like. you got to take your words and you got to carefully weigh the value of those words for that transaction to be made. And so can I put that in, uh, spin it as a biblical principle that's real easy? Think before you speak, okay? Think before you speak. Take your time. Slow down. I'm going to apply that to a lot of things that we do uh, in communication, such as emails, some of you are a little too quick in sending emails. You know, I have this uh, setting. I wonder if you have it, and if you do, uh, why don't you uh, put in the scroll, say, I have that too, okay? I'm talking about that setting in the email where be once I push send, a message pops up that says something like, are you sure you want to send it? <laughs> something like that, right? And I love that because a lot of times I'll say, you know what? 
Thank you, Google. Thank you, Gmail. I'm not ready to send it. And so I'll click Cancel. And I'll read it again. And maybe I'll edit it, do a spell check, you know, things like that. And uh, I love that. There's another feature I like uh, in the Gmail where it gives you like 30 seconds to undo the sending. You know what I mean? You send it, and then at the bottom, it's like there's a countdown, and uh, you can push undo. I love that because a lot of times I'll undo it, and then it'll say your message is not sent, and I'll go, Phew. because I want the little extra time to weigh my response. You know what I'm talking about? Emails. Talking about the way we communicate, the way we talk through emails, or how about Facebook? You know, I'm very active on Facebook, you might have noticed, but one thing I don't like is some of the more irresponsible responses, some of the careless responses. I'm thinking that a lot of the responses are not carefully weighed because they're not well articulated, not well thought out, not even biblical, a lot of the responses. I'm talking about Christians even being guilty of that. So listen, we all need to slow down and we need to think before we speak, okay? Make sense? So, pop quiz, what was test number one? It was, are you slow to listen, okay, um, and quick to speak? That's not good. Test question number two, and that is, do you speak without thinking, okay? Didn't get any responses, so I'm just going to keep on going right here. Stop me anytime, Don or George. They are keeping me straight here as, um, okay, I'm not getting any responses right now. Rose has a question. I don't see the question. Where is it? Is it in the scroll? What if you think your spouse has a geyser mouth? Well, if it's not edifying you, if it's not blessing you, if you think that it is uh, damaging, breaking relationships, out of control, uh, if it's, well, I'm actually hinting on the next principle, out of control, full of emotion, because that's the explosions, and so forth. Yeah, um, I think you need to confront. Okay. Now, um, the Bible does talk about confronting in love. And so, Rose, uh, there is kind of a license, if you will, where you as the spouse, and uh, if you're talking about your husband, Bill, I'm going to tell him. <laughs> Just kidding. But um, uh, Rose, uh, if it's your husband, you have every right as a wife to go to him and uh, confront in love. Now, confrontation sounds really bad, sounds a little aggressive, but in the biblical picture, confrontation is about uh, revealing sin. I'm reminded of Matthew chapter 18, verse 15, where it says, if your brother sins, go show him his fault. And so it's about uh, still loving the sinner, but hating the sin, and being able to reveal that sin. So I need to move on, Rose, but I'm going to say definitely you do need to confront, but do it in love. Do it in a way where the person uh, receives it. I'm also going to say go back to inside the units tab, Rose, and look at the first uh, video there on wisdom and timing where I go over Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29, and I go over things about assessing the situation so that you know when to speak and when not to speak and how you can approach your spouse. If you need a follow-up answer to that, let me know. Thank you, George. I, I'm not really getting it inside this uh, a phone. It's not dropping in, but you, guys, you can keep just saying it in my ear, and I'll be able to uh, pick it up that way. Is there anything else, George? Okay. Nope, I can keep on going. Hey, let me give you test question number three. Remember, these are the ways that you me measure whether you are an over-talker or not. Ready? Yes or no? Test question number three is, is your talking out of control and full of emotion? That does conjure back the uh, geyser imagery, right? But the two uh, components here are out of control and full of emotion. So, yes or no? Are you like that? Remember, no is actually the better answer. Let me give you a key verse. It's Proverbs chapter 17, verse 27. Somebody drop it inside the scroll, please. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 27 says, A man of knowledge uses words with restraint. And an even-tempered, excuse me, I'm sorry, I'm reading a little ahead. And a man of understanding is even-tempered. 
That's the whole verse. Let me read that again. A man of knowledge uses words with restraint, and a man of understanding is even-tempered. So what is um, a man of knowledge? It's somebody who has facts, information, wisdom about the situation, right? Okay? And so we're talking about this person. This person now, because he has information about the situation, his words are restrained. You know people who say, I can't help it. It just comes out of my mouth. People say that all the time to me. Pastor, I can't help it. When I get upset, it just comes out of my mouth. I'm telling you, that is not a biblical response. The Bible in every way acknowledges your ability to restrain, control yourself, okay? I'm not going to elaborate on that. I'm just saying it's unbiblical to say, I can't help it because you certainly can. Because here is a man of knowledge who is able to do that, okay? Um, what about a man of understanding? That's the next verse there, or I should say the next line in that verse. That's about the man who has uh, wisdom, understands the situation, and he carefully assesses that situation. And so there you go. If you got that verse open in your Bible, okay, is that verse in the scroll? I hope it is. Because if you see it, those two lines, by the way, it's Hebrew poetry. Poetry usually has two lines. And in those two lines, in this case, they are saying exactly the same thing. Okay? Not always. Sometimes the two lines say opposite things. But in this case, first line says the same thing as the second line. Uh, experts call that synonymous parallelism. How's that for a fancy term? Okay? You can impress your friends at the next cocktail party. Synonymous parallelism. What that means is that the two lines are parallel, and it says that they're basically saying the same things. They're synonymous. So the first line says that the man of knowledge shows restraint. And the second line says a man of wisdom is even-tempered. What does that mean? It means that he's not too high, he's not too low, he's right in the middle, he's Joe Cool, okay? He is somebody who is able to be very, very even because, well, within this context, if you are too high or too low, we're talking about emotions now, it's going to come across the wrong way. And you're going to end up talking too much. You know, one expert or scholar put it this way. And Don, if you're able to, can you cut and paste this in the scroll? It says, shouting puts emotion in the foreground and meaning in the background. Let me say that again. It's about foreground and background. Watch. Shouting puts emotion in the foreground and meaning in the background. And what this expert is saying is that when you're communicating and it's full of emotion, that emotion is what hits that person. It comes into the foreground, and that's what they experience. So much so that the meaning is actually in the background, they might not even get it. And so that's the danger of over-talking when it's full of emotion, it's a little bit out of control, you're not Joe Cool, you're not even-tempered, you're not the man of knowledge with restraint, and in those situations, it's all that emotion that explodes onto the conversation like a geyser. And that is the problem at hand. And so um, you might be guilty of saying too much when you're full of emotion. You know, some people, they're just like so emotional. And I'm saying you got to scale it back. you got to rein it back because that emotion is going to kind of, uh, kind of confuse the conversation. They're not going to really hear uh, what you have to say. Now, I know. Can we just take a 10-second break and acknowledge something about this whole conversation and every conversation that we have, no matter what topic in the full rotation that we have? And that is, it is hard. When I'm talking about don't do this and don't do that, I know that's hard. Or do this and do that. Yeah, it's, it's hard. I know. But can we confirm something right now? Everything is hard. Can you think of anything that is easy to do as Christians? Listen, can we confirm something right now? Talk Live Tuesday. This ain't no self-help tutorial, okay? This is not some random YouTube video where people are just uh, you know, getting some tips on how they can be, to be a better human. That's not what this is about. This is about Christians recognizing that they are sinful and in deep reliance on the Holy Spirit 
and the Word of God to help us through difficult situations. So I don't want you to get the impression when I say do this or do that, and you say, oh man, this is hard, and we just sort of leave it at that. I'm just saying, let's remind ourselves that everything is hard to do, and we need God in our lives, okay? Amen? Somebody drop an amen, okay? I just gave you a 30-second sermon right there about trusting in God and relying on Him. Can I also say, okay, that um, I'm going to start a new video series. Uh, it's not a live show, but it's a video series that uh, I'm going to start tomorrow uh, called Walk by the Spirit. And it's precisely about this where you're obeying God, obeying the Holy Spirit, and doing what He tells you to do, okay? I'm going to drop it inside the Titus 2 community uh, tomorrow, and it's going to be an ongoing series about how to live that kind of life, all right? So listen, I know it's hard, but uh, we got to trust in God and ask Him for help. By the way, that walk by the Spirit, that's Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. I'll talk about that someday. That's a very important passage. But listen... Getting back on track, I want to say that Galatians chapter 5, verse 23 is very relevant to what I just talked about. You know, we're talking about being out of control, full of emotion. What's the biblical principle? Self-control, right? Self-control is not some self-help, whip it up and now you're self-controlled. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the fruit of the Spirit. Galatians chapter 5, verse 23, the fruit of the Spirit is self-control. Spirit with a capital S. I'm not talking about your spirit. I'm talking about the Holy Spirit of God that does this work of sanctification in your life. Okay, enough preaching. Let's get back to the points here. I gave you three. I'm now giving you the fourth test. Here's test number four. Let's determine if you are an over-talker or not. Test question number four. Does your talking lead to unintended, underline that word please, unintended, Arguments. Does your talking, okay, Sadie, lead to unintended arguments? Okay. Yes or no? Take the test, okay? The more yeses, not a good thing, all right? We want to get a bunch of no's here because we don't want to be an over talker, but does your talking lead to unintended meaning? Have you noticed, okay, Sadie, <laughs> have you noticed that sometimes you're talking and talking and talking and next you know it led to an argument? <laughs> Did that ever happen? I'm laughing because I'm acknowledging the reality of that. How many times have you talked, right? And the next thing you know, you guys are arguing big time. And you thought to yourself, you know, I didn't plan to have this argument. You're kind of surprised that you did. Sadie. Okay, Abby, come here. Okay? You're kind of surprised that you did. Okay? This is uh, Abby, everyone. Okay? So, uh, why did that happen? You are in the argument that you did not plan to have, okay? You promise not to talk too much? Right. Ooh. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Are you okay? <laughs> She's fine, okay? Sorry about that drama there. So the biblical principle here uh, in relation to this uh, is uh, stop it. <laughs> Don't talk about those things. I mean it now. Stop doing that. Drop it. <laughs> I'm being very forward. Somebody put that in the, in the scroll, okay? Drop the matter is what I'm talking about. Because listen, if you don't, and you keep talking about it, something bad is going to happen. You know that expression in English, don't open up a can of worms? That came from a long time ago when uh, people who went fishing bought cans. Worms were inside cans. And they would open up the cans and the worms would wiggle out. And the idea was that uh, once they start wiggling out, it would be hard to put them back into the can, okay? And so the idea is don't bring up issues. Don't talk about things, all right? Don't raise topics that are hard to close. Because once they wiggle out, like your words, okay, hard to put them back in. So can I put it very simply? Once it comes out of your mouth, you can't put it back in your mouth, all right? That's the situation. So what was the biblical principle? Drop it. Don't do it. Don't say it because you can't take it back. Once it comes out of your mouth, you can't take it back, boys and girls. All right? Drop the matter before it gets worse. Let me give you a Bible verse. Okay, somebody please. The scroll looks pretty uh, active tonight. I appreciate that. 
Somebody give me some thumbs up. Are you uh, getting anything out of this? Okay, I hope so, because hey, I'm working on this stuff for you. I hope you guys are, uh, and by the way, I've been away for four weeks, and I just want to say thank you to Dr. Don and George, our director, for holding down the fort and, uh, and presenting good stuff. Hey, can you give a big thumbs up to Dr. Don and to George, because they've been teaching you guys some good stuff in the past four weeks. I really appreciate that very much, and Lord willing, you guys are going to see them soon again, okay? But let me give you the key verse, and uh, it is Proverbs chapter 17, verse 14, where it says, Starting a quarrel is like breaching a dam. So drop the matter. That's where I got the biblical principle. Drop it. Drop the matter before a dispute breaks out. So you can get a sense that you're about to get into an argument. What's the biblical principle? Drop it. Stop it, okay? Cut it out. Drop the matter. That's the biblical principle. Because if you keep on going, it's like breaking a dam. And so the old Hebrew imagery is of a dam that bursts open, and now what? Houses, landscaping, trees, bushes, everything gets impacted. And so the idea is when a damaged breach, meaning your mouth is now open, okay, what happens is now even innocent bystanders can get hurt. So what? Uh, children who listen in on the argument, other people standing around, what do they have to do with it? But now your mouth is breached like a dam, and other people are hurt because of it. So what's the biblical principle? Drop it. How many times have I said that? <laughs> you know, drop it, okay? Well, ten times more. Drop the matter, please. Okay? So those are the principles that I've given you so far. I've given you four points, and now... Uh, I'm going to apologize that I'm going to run just a couple minutes over, okay? I apologize for that. But uh, I want to give you the fifth principle here, okay? And again, yes or no? Too many yeses, not a good thing. You want to get a bunch of no's, all right? You want to get a low score tonight. Test number five. Are you an over-talker? Here we go. Does your talking lead to accusations of past sins. Somebody put that in the scroll, please. Does your talking, over-talking, does it lead to accusations of past sins? Now, stare at that principle for a minute or that test question for a minute. That's the opposite of test question number four. So would you write that down in your personal notes? The number four and number five are opposites of one another. Four and five, opposites of one another. Why? Because take a look. Number four is about unintended arguments. You didn't plan it, but it happened. All right? Say the unintended barking. Okay? She didn't plan on it, but hey, something got her really upset. And now she's all worked up about it. Number four is unintended barking. Okay? Number five is intended barking. Or now you made a decision to talk about past sins. So it's a little more, hey, it's a little more serious, huh? It's a little more purposeful. You made a plan. It's now intended. You now have a purpose. So I'm talking about a bad heart now, boys and girls. I'm talking about test number five, which is not good because you have a purpose. You have a motivation. What are some other key words here? You have an intention to talk too much. You actually made a decision to talk too much, okay? And so as a result of that, okay, <laughs> sorry about that. We're trying to get my dog out of this situation. Thank you, okay? And so uh, you're talking too much now, and you're digging up the past, and why are you doing it? You want to hurt the other person. Well, let's be honest here, okay? You don't have to drop it in the scroll, but I want you to drop that in your heart right now. Be honest here. Do you say things to hurt your spouse? Be honest. Do you say things to actually punish your spouse? In other words, you got all these things about past wrongdoings that you are now just going to say. You're going to let it out. The dam has been breached and all the floodwaters, floodgates, geyser, whatever analogy it is. In other words, it's all coming out. All the past wrongs and you're doing it for a purpose and that is to punish the other person. And I'm telling you, that's wrong, okay? I'm telling you it's wrong. Listen, 
If you need to get this video to your spouse, get it to your spouse right now. All right? I'm telling you that all the um, listing of past sins is wrong. Don't do it. Why? Because the biblical principle is, and I'd like for you to fill in the blank, please, would you? And after they fill in the blank, Dr. Don, would you please uh, drop it inside the scroll? I'm talking about 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5, where it says, Love keeps no... What? Fill in the blank, please. Love keeps no... Thank you, Dr. Don. Love keeps no record of wrongs. You just dropped it in the scroll. Please uh, write that down yourselves and confirm it. Because you're not supposed to be keeping a record of your past. So, number five is if you're doing that and bringing up the past, you are definitely an over-talker. You talk too much. You cross the line. And you don't want to be guilty of that. Now listen, an introvert could be guilty of this too. Remember I said in the beginning, this is not about being an extrovert or an introvert. This is not about somebody who talks a lot or talks little. That's not what this topic is about. This is about what happens when you talk. So, an introvert who doesn't talk a lot can be guilty of talking too much. Why? Because he's saying something and he could be, what, not saying a lot, but then all of a sudden bringing up the past sins. And if he has done that, then uh, he's guilty or she is guilty of over-talking, talking too much, okay? And so, you know, okay, Dr. Don already taught you this, that true biblical forgiveness is not bringing up the past again. If you want to or if you need a review of that, go back to the units tab on the left side on a desktop or on a mobile device. Go to the top tab and look for Dr. Don's teaching on forgiveness. And he'll set you straight. And he taught you that true forgiveness is not bringing up the past to re-accuse the person all over again. So, conversely, if you said, I forgive you, if you made that commitment to forgive the other person, then don't bring it up again. Don't bring it up again because you made the commitment not to do it again. And so, do you talk too much? Do you bring up the past to accuse your spouse all over again? That is not a good thing. Now listen, I'm almost done here, and you guys have been very well behaved. Are there been any questions or comments? I see the scroll blowing up. Lots of good stuff in there. If there are any comments or questions, George or Don, could you uh, relay them to me at this time? But uh, I'm about to close right now and I just want to say uh, with test question number five that this over talking possibility where you're bringing up past sins and stuff this could actually happen even if your spouse is not there did you catch that it could happen even if your spouse is not there in other words you're not uh, saying it to your spouse but maybe your spouse is not there but now you are saying it to who your friends right? Your guy friends, your girlfriends, you go out and eat, and now the hot topic on the table, lunch table there, is what your spouse did wrong. And now you guys are going around and in circles and talking about, taking turns, talking about what your spouse has done wrong. And I'm saying in those situations, listen, okay, you did wrong. You crossed the line. If you meet with your girlfriends or your guy friends, and you use that opportunity to dig up the past on your spouse, you did wrong, okay? Because now you are hurting the reputation of your spouse. Your spouse is not there to defend himself or herself. And in those situations, the damage has been done. The worms have wiggled out of the can. You can't take it back. In fact, can I say it any more simply than this? How are you going to fix the reputation of your spouse if you trash your husband or trash your wife at some, you know, social event. You know, one guy said to me, Pastor, I can't go to a Christmas party or Thanksgiving. I can't go to any family event. And I said, why? And he said, every time I go, my wife's sister or mother gives me the dirty look, the evil eye, and I feel so bad. I feel terrible. You see what's going on there? The wife has said so many things about her husband. Bad things I'm talking about. In such a way now the husband can't even go to family functions because his testimony has been stained. And I'm saying, how are you going to fix that? Now there are ways to fix that. We'll talk about it later in future Talk Life Tuesdays. But right now, I just want that to sink in. 
how are you going to fix it? My point is, it's tough to fix it, right? You let the worms out, it's hard to put them back inside the can. I'm talking about your mouth. Your mouth is that can, okay? Hard to put it back in. And so you've got to think twice. Weigh your answers. Be very careful uh, when you talk about your spouse to other people. Okay, and so my point with test question number five is that it's possible to even be guilty of that even when your spouse is not there. All right, those are the five questions. How'd you guys do? Okay, anybody get a perfect score? A perfect score would be five no's. That would be a perfect score. Oh my goodness, Heather got a perfect score. Okay, I resigned from Talk Live. I resigned from Talk Live Tuesday, okay? Heather's going to teach Talk Live Tuesday from now on. Awesome. Got. <laughs> George just said in my ears, we need her husband's testimony. In other words, her husband's verification, confirmation, right? That Heather is truly a, uh, what? Five no's. Wow, Heather, God bless you, okay? We're not going to question that, but God bless you if you truly have that type of character. We're talking about Christian character now, boys and girls. Awesome, okay? Who got five? <laughs> Aaron and Kathy, okay. George tells me to say hello to Aaron and Kathy who are new. Welcome. We're so glad that you are here. We hope that you benefit from the uh, interaction. You know, I'm so proud of the Titus II community. Just how alive and engaging. Hey, isn't that your first impression to see how active it is? You go to other communities, right? They're just posting memes and just a couple likes and there's not enough interaction. And I'm proud to say, God has blessed our community with vibrancy. And so if you are a newcomer, we hope that you are blessed by that. We hope that you're blessed by the live conversations we have every Tuesday night that we call Talk Live Tuesday. So as we close, I hope you take the five test questions to heart. <laughs> Did anybody get five yeses? Oh, that would be uh, pretty, uh, pretty uh, incredible. Okay, five yeses. But hey, listen, we should always examine ourselves, right? Always test ourselves. Always measure ourselves by the Word of God. And ain't that the truth? Do we not all fall short of the glory of God? I'm thinking even Heather is a sinner, right? Okay. Heather, can you confirm that? Are you a sinner? <laughs> yeah, Heather's a sinner. I'm sure she is. Uh, she got a perfect five, but we are all sinners falling short of the glory of God, including Heather. And all of us need God to help us as we continue to grow in our character and continue to bless others, especially our spouse, that we might have a marriage that brings glory to God. And so as I close, I just want to give thanks to God for the Titus II community. The Titus II community is an extension of a ministry called the Titus II Ministry. Dot org, I should say. And so could you, somebody please, uh, George or Don, could you please drop that inside the scroll? Titus II Ministry dot org is our website. Please visit. We're, uh, it's still a little fresh, but we want to fill it with more resources. And also, George or somebody, please drop the link to our newsletter. We'd like for you to subscribe because it gives you a heads up, gives you updates about resources and things. And so please, connect with us on our newsletter as well. And uh, I'm just loving the fact that the word is getting out about the Titus II community and about Talk Live Tuesday and about the special guest that we've had so far, Dr. Don, George Zhao. We had uh, Eileen Scipioni last week. We've got some other great guests lined up in the future. So it's not just me yelling at you guys. But uh, it's going to be just great and excited about the curriculum that we're building inside the units. And so go tell a friend. We are here every Tuesday night, 6 o'clock to 9 o'clock, and also in the archives as well. And in closing, I want to say that our prayers are with you. If you have a marriage that is volatile because of over-talking, we'd love to pray for you. Please contact us. Private message us. Let us know, because uh, we are definitely spiritually connected to you. If you need counseling, let us know, uh, because we all need help at some point in our lives. And so with all of those things said, I just want to give thanks to the moderators and to uh, the director, George Zhao, Dr. Don, moderator, and other people on our team, Scott Johnston, Stuart Martin, who's on vacation tonight, and uh, so many others, Jeannie Cha. And uh, thank you for the entire team that works uh, overtime to make this a team effort. So, uh, hey, give some likes, would you? Give some thumbs up, give some smiley faces, and give me some hearts for the entire Talk Live Tuesday. I might be one guy talking right now, but uh, hey, 
give a whole bunch of uh, smiley faces for all the other people behind the scenes that have truly made this possible. Thank you so much for all of that. And uh, we'll see you next week as we continue our uh, conversation. And next week, pretty serious stuff. Remember, communication. And the next one is conflict. We're talking about something very serious. We will see you next week on Talk Live Tuesday. Bye, everyone. We'll see you later. Thanks for joining us for a devotional drink today. If you love espresso, click here to subscribe so you know when the next one is ready to enjoy. Visit our website for resources for every chapter of your life. And if you're thirsty for more, click here. See you next time. May God bless your day.